Hello, it's time for GGSP, the show for younger gamers by gamers. I'm Jem. And I'm Rad. Coming up on today's show, Jem and I team up to save the world in the co-op spy thriller Operation Tango. Um, who here looks sus? Plus, we take a look at an all-new Aussie Minecraft mod that takes on natural disasters in Climate Warriors. So I'm going to teach the kids here today about pyrocumulonimbus, which is kind of a frightening experience that happens during a fire. And we're going to use Minecraft-like props to actually do it. Wait until you see how cute a blocky Minecraft koala looks. Uh, how cute or how cube? You know what? Both. <laughs> Let's start the show. Right, well, before we start tangoing it up, I noticed you playing a game the other day, Rad, with some adorable little robots. What was that about? Yeah, I've been playing The Colonists. It's this cute settlement building game where you help some industrious robots make a new home. It taps into a nice, relaxing balance of bolstering your little community and expanding into uncharted territories. There's something so satisfying about arranging and upgrading your buildings, seeing your farms flourish, and there's a fulfilling sense of progression with lots of cool things to unlock and discover. Although you can only place roads in stretches of four minimum, and you can only join roads at the post that gets placed at the end. Jam, this had me pulling out my hair. It made it so hard to make my town nice. I played this on Xbox, and in the end, I had to put it down because I ran into a bug that stopped me from mining iron and thus making any more progress. I really hope they fix that bug because I want to go back for more. Well, it makes sense a whole colony run by robots would have a few bugs in it. Can you imagine a whole town run by Darrens? I heard that. It would be efficient. That marvellous. <laughs> of course. Yes, of course, Darren. <clears throat> well, speaking of town building gone wrong, did you hear the story about the English town filled with Mario pipes? Uh, that sounds like town building gone right to me. I know. But residents of Walsall in the United Kingdom were less than impressed by their local council installing these giant green planter pots that locals are calling Mario pipes. I like them. I think they're fun. I think the issue is more the town needs to cut $50 million from its budget, so people thought there were probably better uses for that money. Yeah, probably. It's just a shame they didn't install some Mario coin boxes instead. Hmm. Moving on, though, it seems the little Big Planet servers have had to be taken down. The game's servers have been down repeatedly for the past few months, and it seems that hackers are to blame. Apparently, they've managed to gain access to the community features and post some not very nice things. So Sony has had to disable the servers until they can come up with a solution. Why can't people just be nice? Well, who knows, Rad? But I do have a story about some nice people at the National Taiwan University who have created a prototype VR controller that can simulate fur so you can actually interact with fur babies in VR. It works by changing the lengths and angles of some bristles, which can simulate the feeling of different fur roughness and stiffness, and even simulate the feeling of things like pillows and fabrics. Oh, that's crazy. Although I don't see that coming to mainstream VR controllers anytime soon. And I don't see any time left for the news, you two. Time to get reviewing! <laughs> Just need to re-engineer the data center for maximum firewall disintegration. This code is so dirty, you'd think it'd never seen a mop before. Ah, I'm gonna need to ray trace the defragmented blockchain. Two more bytes and I'm in the crust! Hey, Rad, why are you sitting in the dark? Nothing, spy stuff! I was trying to hack into the button, see if I could learn anything. Ooh. Intruder alert! Intruder alert! Your mission is to access their mainframe server and dig out the engineering records of the microchip. Good luck. I'm hacking cubes. I don't see IPs on my little doohickey. Walk away from the bars in a straight line. Yep, keep going. Cool, perfect, there you go. Yay. I've been infected by a virus, what, excuse me? Let's try again. Okay. Operation Tango brings two-player cooperative play to the spy world. And when we say cooperative, we mean cooperative. Much in the same style as Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, you both work on the same puzzle but from different angles. So different, in fact, that you have no idea what the other person is seeing. Unless you can see them on a security camera. 
The idea is to communicate via voice chat, working together to figure out puzzles without looking at each other's screens. One person plays Agent, a shoes-to-the-ground espionage expert. The other plays Hacker, who lives in a digital world of codes and cameras. They've balanced it fairly well to stop it from feeling like the hacker is always the sidekick helping the agent. You both work together to achieve a common goal. But that also means you spend equal time just kind of waiting around for the other person to do stuff. Because you can't see what your partner is looking at, it can be hard to know what you need to focus on or what the puzzle even is. And it can be really hard to connect what you're seeing with what your partner is describing and how they influence each other because they are just so different. For example, do you remember the data stacks, Jem? Oh, the data stacks. Right? We spent ages super confused trying to understand what each other was seeing so we could even start to figure out what we were doing. So how many are in your stack? Is there five? Five, yeah. So it's second from the bottom on the left? Yes. Turns out I needed to move the grey boxes I was seeing to align two lit up boxes Jem was seeing while avoiding having the red boxes on my screen touch. And all of this on a time limit! It's difficult to explain even when you know what is going on and almost impossible when you don't. And sometimes it doesn't feel like you're working together at all. Because you can't see what your buddy sees, you can't help them figure out their parts. So you just have to wait for them to get to the solution or wait for them to tell you where to go. I don't know which door I need to run to either. You just need to tell me where I need to go. I found it a very special type of frustrating. There are hints, but they weren't always the most helpful, especially if you straight up just didn't understand how the puzzle works. But I must say, the style of the game was particularly good. The spy music, the cool character design, the quick getaways, it felt like a classic movie. I especially love the briefings before you start a mission. We can't let this biological weapon fall into the wrong hands. It totally got me in the mood to do some reconnaissance. Oh, same. Those cutscenes really made me feel like a spy. But unfortunately, the gameplay, not so much. But there is also a story thread through the missions, which is a bit of fun. Final thoughts, Jem? I absolutely love the concept and the styling, but the puzzles themselves weren't quite enjoyable. I didn't have any of those aha moments, and I need me those aha moments. Answers either seemed kind of obvious and the challenge was explaining it to my buddy, or I just didn't know what I was looking at. I'm giving Operation Tango two and a half out of five rubber chickens. I can see a great game in there, but it's just not quite peeking through enough for me. In the right circumstances, you could have a lot of laughs with a friend, but I didn't find the game fun in and of itself. I'm giving Operation Tango three out of five rubber chickens. Minecraft is one of the biggest and best games of the last decade. Aside from teaching us important life lessons like never dig straight down because you will definitely hit lava, it can also be used to help teach us about important real-world issues. We're here at the launch of a free custom Minecraft map called Climate Warriors. The map features a short simulated scenario that aims to show us how to be prepared to protect wildlife and homes against natural disasters like bushfires. Wildlife like our furry friend Arlo the Koala, who's a very special IRL guest today. Who's played Minecraft here before? Craig Rucastle is here for the launch to explain how climate change can affect extreme weather events. So tell us a bit about what's going on here today. Yeah, so I'm going to teach the kids here today about pyrocumulonimbus, nimbus, which is kind of a frightening experience that happens during a fire. And we're going to use Minecraft-like props to actually do it, so it's going to be great. Why is it important to communicate these messages of climate change and being prepared? Well, climate change is here and it's already affecting the world we live in. And for kids, we're going to face a different world. And so preparing them for that, teaching them how to prepare for those natural disasters is really important. And that's what Climate Warriors is all about. The custom design of the Climate Warriors map is inspired by Australian towns, so it's especially relevant to us Minecrafters here in Oz. The simulation in the game is also based on real-world data and climate trends. Well, Minecraft's great because you can actually build a world, so you can actually build scenarios that the kids can go into. You know, they can get in a helicopter and they fly over fires in this. Great thing about Minecraft as well, it's not too real in the sense that it's not frightening, you know, but it's a great way to actually get them into that, that situation. So have you guys played Minecraft before? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? yeah? It's my way of life. Yeah. What are we doing here today in the game? We are trying to find a helicopter. Can you 
take us through what you're doing right now. Okay, so we're building a, a Minecraft house right here. It has to be fireproof, so and then we'll test if it's fireproof by like pressing a button here. And if you've ever wanted to see some of our native fauna like Arlo get the Minecraft treatment, well, you're in luck. Do you have a favourite Australian animal that you've seen so far that you're looking forward to seeing? Um, koala. Koala. Yeah. I want to see a kangaroo because they're beautiful and they are always, like, bad as the wildlife. But how do we feel about this being set in Australia and seeing Australian environments? Well, I think it is a really good idea to actually have something that happens so people can actually, like, have the experience of, like, what it was like in the bushfires. Normally the games that I play, they're all American and I can't, like, I can't really relate to some things that they're saying. But now that we have this Australian game, it's so much easier uh, to understand and with all the bushfires that we've been going through. And what have you guys learnt so far? Well, it's better to put, like, rooftop sprinklers to, like, fireproof your house. And to make, um, Iron bar doors instead of wooden doors. So what have we learnt so far from playing Climate Warriors? That it's like really fun to like discover things. Um, I've learnt about like um, how important things are, like the wildlife, how it affects us as well. That it's not just a game, but it's like something that's actually happened. So like we should be aware of things that would happen like this. All right, we've got a bunch of questions to get through today, so we better get questing. Oh, I cannot wait, which is great because I don't have to. So let's start off with our first video, and this one comes to us from Tyron. Hi, Jim and Ranandon. My name is Tyron, and I'm such a huge fan from your show. Did you know it's Maya and Donkey Kong's 40-year anniversary? Hey, i got a great idea for a new game. Do you know what I like to see? I like to see Mark and Don Kong's birthday party for Nintendo Switch. What do you think of that? A great idea for a new game, GGSP. Thanks, Tyron. You know, I knew it was the 25th anniversary of Pokemon, the 30th anniversary of Sonic, and the 35th anniversary of The Legend of Zelda, but I actually didn't realise this year was Mario and Donkey Kong's 40th anniversary too. But you're right, it was back in 1981 that the original Donkey Kong arcade game was first released, featuring Donkey Kong, of course, and the first appearance of Mario, back when he was known as Jumpman. They sure have come a long way since then. And your idea for a Mario and Donkey Kong birthday party game for the Switch sounds pretty cool too. If Nintendo ever released a game like that, I'm sure we'd play it. Maybe it could even be some sort of spin-off of a Mario Party style game. Like a virtual board game with a bunch of Mario and Donkey Kong birthday theme stuff. So many possibilities. What a great idea. Totally. Sounds like you would make a great game designer, Tyron. So keep brainstorming those great game ideas. Oh, for sure. Now moving on to our next video, and this one comes to us from Asha. Hey, JGSP. I've got some questions for you. One, is Guardi and Pokemon Sword and Shield Two, what's the most hardest demon level on Geometry Dash? Three, what's your most recent Pokemon? Plus, here's some emoticons for you, Jam. Ooh, for me? Yay! <laughs> Thanks, Asha. To answer your first question about whether Gardevoir is in Pokemon Sword and Shield, well, yes, sorry! You should be able to find and catch Gardevoir in areas like the Dusty Bowl or Rolling Fields in foggy weather, or the Lake of Outrage during clear, stormy or foggy weather. Gardevoir can also evolve from Curlia after you reach level 30. As for the hardest, or indeed the most <laughs> hardest, demon level on Geometry Dash, well, full disclosure, I generally steer clear of Geometry Dash unless I'm fixing to angry up the blood. So let's ask Darren. It's just too fast for me. Greetings, this is Darren. Hey, Darren, it's Gem and Rad here at the Ask SP desk. Um, Asha is wondering about the hardest demon level on Geometry Dash. What says you? Oh, well, not only are demon levels in Geometry Dash considered to be the most difficult tier, they are also divided into further difficulty ranks within this, from easy to extreme. So, 
the extreme demon levels are likely to be the most challenging for the majority of players. There is actually a Geometry Dash online community that maintains a ranking system for the most difficult demon levels known as the Demon List. Of the currently available levels, some truly tricky ones ranked in the top five include Crimson Planet, Kenos, Zodiac, and the Golden. But the stage ranked as number one most challenging of all is Tartarus. Which I suppose is quite fitting for a level named after the deepest, darkest part of the underworld in Greek mythology. Well, I bet you've beaten all those levels, right, Darren? Oh, uh, sorry, I, I didn't catch that. Oh, the extreme demon levels. Piece of cake for you, I would have thought. What, with the superior processing and pro gaming strats in that database of yours? Oh, uh, you, would, you would think so, but, uh... Oh, sorry, bad connection. Losing signal! Bye! Uh, uh, okay, Darren, bye! You know, I don't think he's actually beaten any of those. Darren talks a big game, game, but I suspect he's more of a noob than he lets on. Uh, don't let him hear you say that. Anyway, on to the question of our most recent Pokemon. Well, the most recent Pokemon game we both played was New Pokemon Snap. But I'm often playing a little bit of Pokemon Go in the background too. Here and there, on the go, you know. My most recent catch in that was probably Magikarp. Ha, huh, that magical carp. Oh, nice. I don't remember the last Pokemon I caught, but the last one I snapped in New Pokemon Snap was Lipard. Apple. Oh, the face of disgust. Oh, some very snappy snapping there, Gem. Oh, why, thank you. Well, that is all the time we have for Ask SP today. If you've got a question for us, go here to send it in. And if you make it a video question and it appears on the show, you'll score some sweet GGSP goods. And they are some very good goods. Good goods for our good game spawn point peeps. Oh, say that five times fast. Good goods for our good game sp I can't. Goodness gracious, those are some good, good game SP goods. Oh, my brain hurts. But we are out of time for another week, so next week on GGSP... We create some truly mesmerising and ridiculous custom-made Miis in Miitopia on the Switch. That Mii creator definitely needs some more robot parts. Or some ping-pong balls and spaghetti scoops. Oh, true that. Until next time, may all your games be good ones. Gem out. Brad out. Down out.